In this lecture, we will study about foreign key constraints in databases. Let's first revise what constraint actually is. Constraints are actually business rules that are created with domain knowledge or with the requirements and desires of clients or stakeholders. For example, a course can be taught by a minimum of one teacher or a maximum of three teachers. This rule becomes a constraint for us as client enforced it, so we must implement it. Constraint by definition is a relationship among data elements that the DBMS is required to enforce. For example, a tuple must have a unique attribute that will outstand it among all tuples of relations, that is key constraints or primary key constraints, etc. We have certain types of constraints, keys, that is primary keys, foreign key or referential integrity, value based or tuple based and assertions. We will study about foreign key constraints in this lecture. Rest of the types are covered in different lectures of same series. So what type of business rule foreign key actually is? Let's take example of product and category table. Product has name, price and ID of the category to which it belongs and a category table which has name description of its type. It is visible from the look that product table needs category ID to keep track of its category, but this ID is coming from the category table. Should any tuple in product table has a category ID that is not present in category table? Is it possible? Obviously, this should not happen. Otherwise, we cannot say anything about the truthfulness of our data. Similarly, if our product table has an CID of 5, which is maybe books, and if this category 5 is deleted from the category table later, then what should happen with the product having CID 5? Should it be deleted as well? These are the key questions that should be answered, and answer actually lies with the foreign key constraint implementation. So if we will handle this validity problem, then it means we have implemented our foreign key constraint. Let's see the definition of the foreign key. In the context of relational databases, a foreign key is a set of attributes subject to a certain kind of inclusion dependency constraint, specifically a constraint that the tuples consisting of the foreign key attributes in one relation R must also exist in some other relation, not necessarily distinct relation S. And furthermore, that those attributes must also be a candidate key in S. Or in simple words, a foreign key is a set of attributes that references a candidate key. Also note that the table containing the foreign key is called the child table and the table containing the candidate key is called the referenced or parent table. There are two options for declaring foreign key. Number one being declare the attribute as a foreign key in front of it. Or two, create it as another element just like the other attributes. Synthesis type foreign key pass list of attributes of child table references relation name and attributes of parent table to which it is referring. So referenced attributes must be declared PK or unique that is possibly a candidate key. So let's add foreign key in the product table. Here we are adding foreign key as an option one that is with attribute. So after declaring our category ID, we are writing references, our table name category, and the column name ID will be passed inside. Another way is to add foreign key as element of the schema. We have written it separately at end of the attribute declaration, foreign key column name of child table, references parent tables attribute ID. So let's challenge ourselves with few questions. So question number one being, can attribute involved in our child table have null values? Sim let's simplify the question. That is, can attribute in our product table have null values? And the attribute is upon which the foreign key is added. So the answer to this question is yes, because foreign key can have null values in child table as there may be some products which have not been assigned any category yet. Question number two says, can attribute which are linked as foreign key involved in referenced relation that is second relation or parent table have null values? So what is the impact of having null in the value of the FK attribute? As discussed earlier, 
they can be a primary key or at least unique if fk attribute is referencing primary key that is category id of category table then parent table cannot have null values but if it is referring a unique attribute then it can have null values but as this will not appear in join so it does not matter however in most of the cases child tables are referring to the pks of the parent tables Referential integrity says that if B references A, then A must exist or is valid. Here are a few more questions. For first relation R or child relation, what happens if we are inserting a new tuple with non-null a foreign key value and it is not valid, that is not present in the parent relation? Similarly, if we are updating our tuples to change our foreign key attribute to a non-null non value, and it is not valid, then what should happen? Answer to these questions is simple. That is, we should reject all types of such queries to maintain referential integrity. However, for the other relation, we have similar questions, but now problem should be attacked with a different mindset. Question number one says, if we delete a tuple from our parent table, that is, maybe we delete a category, then what will happen to our product tuple who were assigned that category. Question 2 says, in the same fashion, if we update parent table's foreign key attribute, that is, if we change category ID of some tuple, then what should happen with the products who were assigned that old category ID? If we will not take actions for problem 3 and 4, then referential integrity will be lost and we, and we will start to get dangling pointers when joining two relations. That is, data will become invalid. A tuple with a foreign key value that does not appear in the referenced relation is said to be dangling tuple. Another definition is a tuple which falls to participate in a join is called a dangling. Both statements are equivalent. Dangling tuples are exactly the tuples that violate the referential integrity for this foreign key constraint. To solve this problem, we have certain options. We will discuss it in next slide. For question number three and four, we have three policies. So number one being is to simply reject such type of queries. That is, do not allow parent table, let's say category table, to delete or update those tuples that were referred in the product table. Second option is cascade delete or cascade update. That is, to delete or update those FK attributes in product table as well that were updated in category table. That is, if category ID 5 was changed to 6, then we should also update the product's table tuples with category ID 5 to 6. And same will happen for the delete operation. Third option is to set null in the foreign key attribute of child relation so that products are not deleting but their reference is lost, which means they have to be updated in future. We can set these policies with respect to our needs. However, default policy is to simply reject. Syntax for the policy implementation is given. That is, we had written on delete set null and on update cascade. It means that if any tuple in the category table is deleted, then we will set null in the foreign keys attribute of product table so that it can be changed to some proper value in future. However, if any category ID is updated in category table, then it should be also updated in the tuples of product table that are referring it. This is also logical because we should not delete products if category is updated as we will lose data of products for no reason.